everybody! My name is Bethany and today I would love to read you a book. The book that I've picked today is called Corduroy and this book is by Dawn Freeman. So this book is a red book and on the cover is our main character Corduroy. He is a small fuzzy light brown bear, a teddy bear. And he wears green overalls, a dark green like a Christmas tree. And the overalls are made of corduroy. Corduroy is a type of fabric and it has lines down the fabric that make it rough. They make it a rough texture when you touch them. Now these overalls have straps over the shoulders and they're connected with small silver buttons. But oh no! his right shoulder is missing a button. So the strap just hangs down, it hangs off of his shoulder. And now this is gonna be an important detail for the rest of the story, so remember that. Let's get started. Corduroy. The first page is just the word corduroy in blue and then a beautiful little painting of his green overalls with both buttons there. It says story and pictures by Don Freeman. All right, the first page. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. Now the picture is Corduroy sitting next to his friends on the shelf. There's a clown with big orange hair and a yellow suit and, r and red ruffles around his neck. There's a bunny rabbit, a big fuzzy bunny rabbit with a blue bow tie. It's a big blue bow tie. Then corduroy in the middle. Then next to him is a little porcelain doll with a pink bow and a pink dress and blonde straw-like hair and a giraffe a big tall giraffe. She's got beautiful eyelashes and some brown spots and a black tail. All right. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. This picture is of all the shoppers. Now this store is big. There's an escalator inside and there's lots of people and it looks like it's winter time because they're all wearing fancy coats and hats and heels. And there's lots of kids playing in the toy section. We see the toy section here with a woman checking out, helping some customers, lots of different toys. And we see corduroy among them. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Now, this little girl is beautiful. She has beautiful brown skin and long black hair with bangs. And she's got a beautiful pink coat on and a white head covering that's tied under her chin to keep out the cold and some white gloves. And she's just looking at Corduroy and she loves him. But her mom is standing by and she has lots of bags in her hands because she's already been shopping today. Her mom also has beautiful brown skin and black hair and she's got a hat and a big purple coat. She's holding all of these bags and she's looking at her like, no, we can't get the bear. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. And the picture is of Corduroy frowning and the little girl frowning as they walk away. You can see the buttons on her coat. You can see the big gold earring that her mom wears. As they walk away, you see the sides of them. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. So Corduroy, this picture is him looking at his, his overalls. Oh no, I didn't know the button was lost. So he's gonna go and find it. Late that evening, 
When all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Now there's two pictures on this page. It's mostly black and white to show how dark it is inside of the department store. But Corduroy is in color and some of the other things are in color. Corduroy is climbing off of his shelf away from the bunny and the giraffe and the doll. He's using some blocks to climb down the shelf and he's slowly looking throughout the department store. Now the department store is covered up because it's closed, so everything's covered with cloth. But he's on the bright red floor and he's bending down looking around. In the back, we can see the escalator. It's turned off, but it's yellow, it's in color. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he'd stepped onto an escalator and up he went. So the escalator is on and he steps onto it. It's a blue escalator and he's going up. We see the back of Corduroy and he looks surprised because he did not mean to get on here. The next picture, he says, could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. We can see his smile as he moves up and up. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor. And there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. Now this is a department store. So this upper level is where they're advertising where you can buy couches and lamps and beds, everything that he sees. So it's a big, big floor where you have colorful blue couches and yellow tables. There are lots and lots of lamps and a big row of beds. Each bed is different, has different pillows. There are chairs and there are flowers and it does, it looks quite like a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. Now the mattress doesn't have any bedding on it, so it doesn't have a sheet or a blanket. So you can just see the plain part of the bed. And this bed has small little buttons on it to keep the bed in place. He climbs onto it. He, all at once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. So he tries to pull out this white button, but it's sewn into the bed. So you can see the strings connecting it to the bed as he pulls, and he's frowning because it's not working. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled bang into a tall floor lamp over it fell with a crash so this first picture corduroy's in mid-air he is falling off and he is tumbling into the lamp on top of him you see the button which is flying above him so he got it off of the mattress the next picture is him sitting on the ground against the bed, holding his head because it hurts. And behind him, the lamp is toppled over and lying on the ground. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. This picture is of a round man with a mustache. He has a flashlight and a policeman hat and a policeman badge. And he's got a blue work uniform and a bag strapped over one shoulder that hangs at his waist. And he's pointing the flashlight down the escalator and he hurriedly is running down. Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. The next picture, he has his flashlight and he's pointing it at where Corduroy just was. 
He's looking at the lamp that's fallen on the ground, right in front of the bed. But Corduroy is not there. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Now this is a big white pillow with a frilly outline and a big white blanket. And then you see two tiny little fuzzy brown ears in the light of his flashlight that he's pointing. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? This picture, he has drawn the covers back. He's holding them in his hand. And in his other hand, he's pointing the flashlight at Corduroy. And he's looking at him mysteriously. And Corduroy has a little bit of a sad face as he sits against the pillow. You can see his shadow drawn against the pillow by the flashlight. The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. He tucks him in his right arm, and on his other hand, he's holding onto the escalator as he goes down and down. Corduroy is looking around. The watchman is looking down at the escalator. He set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. He leans Corduroy up against his clown friend, and they're all sleeping. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. This is a beautiful picture. It's yellow and it has a glow. Corduroy is very surprised. He's sitting up on the shelf and he's seeing this beautiful little girl. She's wearing the same outfit as before, but she has a beautiful, soft smile on her face. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. Now this picture is her talking to Corduroy. She has a coin purse in her hand. It's blue and it has zigzags, crosses on it. She's reaching in the coin bag to pull out some money. It's a big picture of the shelf where you can see a dog and the bunny rabbit and a lion and a turtle. There's two shelves. And behind the shelf is a cashier lady and she's about to grab corduroy and wrap him up. The cashier lady has a striped shirt and glasses and a bun with red hair in the bun and a black skirt. And she's got a smile. She's gonna wrap up corduroy. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered. And she carried Corduroy home in her arms. This picture is the sales lady from behind. It's the same clothes. She has a pink striped shirt and pearl earrings. And she has a box out, a big white box out to put Corduroy in. But we see Lisa walking away because she didn't want it. And she's just holding Corduroy so tight in her arms walking past the escalator and outside the door. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. There's a picture of her running up the stairs. She's holding Corduroy out with both arms in front of her. The stairs are blue and the walls are yellow. She's running up them. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers. And alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Now this room is beautiful. It's got lined oak wooden floors and blue walls with yellow stripes. There's a window. And on the windowsill is a potted flower. There's pink roses and curtains over the window. And they're yellow curtains with beautiful daisies drawn on them in black like a pencil. And the blinds are pulled up and you can see out the window, it's snowing. There's a rocking chair, a pink rocking chair with some cushions and a bed sit, sat in the corner. The bed is has a quilted mattress on top, a quilted, um, mattress on top. There's different colored patches on the blanket and a big white pillow 
and above that are two paintings. There's a pink dresser with a blue brush on top and a rug on the bottom. The rug has many different colored circles all getting smaller and right on top of the rug is Corduroy's little white bed with brown wood on either side to be the headboard. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. She's sitting in her rocking chair. It's got curved black arms and pink cushions. And she's in a bathrobe. She's in a beautiful white bathrobe and her long black hair is tied up with a pink ponytail. And she has Corduroy sitting up on her lap as she sews a silver button onto there. And he's smiling a smile so big. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. And this last picture has Corduroy smiling, biggest of all. You can see him lying on her shoulder, and you can see the side of her face as she nuzzles him and holds him tight. And you can tell they're going to be very happy. So that is the end of our story. Thank you for reading with me. Have a great day, you guys.